You called me. So here I am. Oh, hello there. Sorry, you just caught me practicing my telekinesis skills on a can of beans. It's not, not going too well, as you can see. Anyway, this week I've been playing a load of Control, and I've spotted a bunch of Easter eggs in there that clearly link the world of Control with the world of Alan Wake. These aren't just cute little nods in the form of a couple of cheeky collectibles, though. These are deep lore references that suggest that the events in Alan Wake occurred in the same universe as Control. Think of it like the birth of a Remedy version of the MCU, but without all the skin-tight super suits, and you'll be on the right track here. In the following video, you'll learn about 13 ways that the world of Control links to the world of Alan Wake, but you'll also see and hear a lot of spoilers regarding Control's story and locations, so do bear that in mind before you proceed with this video. Oh, cool! Telekinesis rules! Wee -woo, wee -woo. This first easter egg is probably the most significant, but you won't be able to access it until you've learned how to levitate. Once you've done that, you'll need to proceed to the fifth floor of the Panopticon, the same floor where you find Dylan's cell, and then use levitate to float on over to this opening. You'll find it in the southwest portion of the Panopticon if you're having trouble working out which side to float to. Jump back out from that area, float along to the next opening, and once you land, you should get the notification that you've discovered a hidden area. Then just walk to the containment cell marked Unit 6, and you'll get to see the man himself, Alan Wake, projected onto the wall of the containment cell. I used to know where fiction ends and reality begins. Here, they're all the same. It's a hideous trap, my every thought made real. Fear, desire. How can I ever know for sure I've escaped and not just lost in my own fantasy of it? That thought alone can drive you insane. While seeing Alan after all this time is pretty cool, the most important thing here is actually a collectible on the floor. It's a case file written by the Federal Bureau of Control, and it's about the typewritten page that's being held in that containment cell. The case file explains that the typewritten page, or AI83-KE, is an altered item. This is Control's name for an everyday object that has been acted upon by a paranatural force during Altered World Experiences, or AWEs for short. These AWEs are major paranatural events, and in this case file, we learn that the events in the town of Bright Falls during Alan Wake's adventure in 2009 are listed as an AWE just like the events in Ordinary Wisconsin, which gave Jesse and her brother their powers. There's also an interesting observation made in the first paragraph of the case file about some of the text being violently scratched out. Could this be a reference to Alan Wake's doppelganger antagonist, Mr. Scratch, I wonder? Don't mind him, he's Mr. Scratch. Your friends will meet him when you're gone. As a side note, both Alan Wake and AWEs are also referenced in Remedy's 2016 game Quantum Break, and while I won't be going into depth on those, it's pretty safe to say that the events in Quantum Break can also be connected to the same universe as Control and Alan Wake. So we now know that a version of Bright Falls exists in the world of Control, but according to a supplement case file about altered item 83-KE, Bright Falls wasn't the place where this typewritten page was found. Make sure you have the levitate power and then head to this location in Transit Corridor South. Hop on top of this train carriage, and from there, float your way to the window on the right-hand wall. You need to break the window in order to get in, which can be a bit fiddly, but once you're in there, you'll be able to grab a bunch of materials and a brand new case file. 
This case file is a transcription of the typewritten page from the previous Easter egg. The interesting information here, though, is held in the background section, and that states that the page was discovered in an instance of the Ocean View Motel and Casino. The Ocean View Motel and Casino is the place of power that connects various dimensions, and Jessie has to pass through it multiple times during her adventure. Whilst there, Jessie is only able to open the door marked with the inverted pyramid, but the case file notes that the typewritten page had been pushed into the motel's corridor from under the door marked with the symbol of a spiral. Could this spiral door actually link to the Dark Place, a supernatural location in which Alan became trapped at the end of his games? It seems very likely. We learn even more about how events in Bright Falls tie into the law of control in this next easter egg that can be found in an office on the top floor of the Prime Candidate program. Check behind these two boxes to find a new case file, this time detailing the events surrounding the AWE in Bright Falls. The opening summary links the event to a threshold manifestation, a phenomenon in which two dimensions leak into one another. The summary explains that a threshold event at Bright Falls Cauldron Lake was the likely cause of Alan Wake's ability to alter reality by writing his stories. This threshold event led to Alan creating the Bright Falls Altered World event, and it ended with Alan becoming trapped in the dark place. I understood what I had to do now. I knew how to write the ending to Departure. This case file goes on to mention Barry Wheeler, who's Wake's agent, and Sarah Breaker, the sheriff of Bright Falls, both characters who featured in the Alan Wake game. What's interesting here is that Breaker's father, Frank, is also mentioned, and he is listed as an ex-FBC agent who had investigated similar events in Bright Falls in the past, specifically in the years 1970, 1976, and 1978. The file goes on to talk about these dates in conjunction with both Thomas Zane and the Anderson brothers Odin and Tor, but we'll talk more about those characters in a bit. The final interesting point in this case file is the fact that it lists an old light switch as a possible object of power. Objects of power, like the Benikoff TV that allows Jesse to levitate, are formed when astral entities connect with altered items, and they can be bound to para-utilitarians like Jesse, who are then able to wield their powers. This old light switch is known as the Clicker, and as we find out in Alan Wake, it was given to Alan by his mother when he was a child because he was afraid of the dark. The Clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. You can find a supplemental Bright Falls case file hidden in another part of the Prime Candidate program. Head to the top right corner of that area where the corridors start going all Inception-y and check under this cart for a rather interesting note that not only confirms that Alice Wake survived the events of Cauldron Lake, but also that Alan Wake had been tagged as a potential para-utilitarian. Just like Jesse, this would mean that Alan himself would be able to wield paranatural powers, bind objects of power to himself, and that he would have been a potential candidate for replacement director of the Federal Bureau of Control, a position that Jesse stumbles into at the start of Control. Something's coming. This threat. As a side note, Zachariah Trench, the previous director of the FBC, is played by James McCaffrey, who voiced Max Payne in the Max Payne games and Thomas Zane in Alan Wake. Alan, seven years old, would fight sleep to the bitter end. The hitchhiker has been taken over by the dark presence. You can't hurt him now. The darkness protects him from all harm. This next link is open to interpretation, but it seems to be a nod towards Alan Wake's bad guys, the Taken, who are inhabitants of Bright Falls who have been possessed by the Dark Presence. Use your powers of levitation to head up to the top floor of Dead Letters and make your way to these desks, where you'll spot a dead letter lying on the floor. This dead letter from a Mr. Richard Bowker talks about a strange, vivid dream he'd had. 
The dream featured a small empty town with a lake at its centre, like Bright Falls and Cauldron Lake perhaps. Richard goes on to say that shadows of people moved around him in the dream and that a bright light woke him up. Has Richard been dreaming about the Taken during the AWE in Bright Falls? The FBC must think so if this correspondence has ended up in the halls of dead letters. Alrighty, head to this room in Central Executive for your next Easter egg. You'll need level 3 clearance to get into the room, but once you're in there, go through the first door on your left to find a report about the America Overnight program. America Overnight was a radio show originally designed by the FBC to assist in providing disinformation to the naturally sceptical population of America. But as it states in the report, it also led to the discovery of numerous AWEs and altered items, thanks to civilians who called in to report paranatural experiences. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. At the end of the report, there is a quick mention of something Alan Wake fans will be very familiar with, the Night Springs TV show, which seems to have had similar results that are catalogued in a separate report. Tonight's episode, A Quantum Suicide. Another mention of Night Springs can be found here, in the main lobby of Central Executive, behind these flight cases. This report won't appear until Arish, the FBC security chief, makes his way up to Central. So when you see him there, pop around the corner to grab this, a record of a TV show proposal from the FBC. Here, the FBC talks about buying and rebooting Night Springs in order to create a TV series which will test paranatural concepts on civilian audiences in order to see how they would react to certain facts presented as fiction in the event that the FBC ever decides to make certain realities public knowledge. Pop along to the Panopticon entrance where you meet Langston for this next one and take a look at the wall behind him where you'll find an altered item case file lying on a box. This case file details an Oh Dear Diner Coffee Thermos, which, if you've played Alan Wake before, you'll recognise as the collectible item in the game. There are 100 thermoses to collect in Alan Wake, but according to the file, this one was discovered on the shore of Cauldron Lake shortly after Wake became trapped in the dark place. If you want to see that thermos for yourself, by the way, head to Unit 5, the containment cell next door to the one where we saw the projection of Alan Wake in Easter Egg Number 1, and you'll find the altered item sat on its own in the middle of the cell. It won't do anything, and you can't collect it, but you can stare for it as long as you like, which is nice. This next easter egg is a reference to Thomas Zane, a very important character in the Alan Wake games. You must find your way to the cabin. It stands in your way. It won't let you pass. After you've made your way through the recreation of the ordinary AWE, you'll go up a flight of stairs. At the top of these stairs will be a tape deck which holds a recording called Jesse Therapy Polaris. And in it, a psychiatrist asks Jesse about a poem written by a poet named Thomas Zane. In the Alan Wake games, Thomas Zane appears as a bright light in the sky, and at the start of the game, he saves Alan from a taken hitchhiker. The hitchhiker has been taken over by the dark presence. You can't hurt him now. The darkness protects him from all harm. During the course of that game, we find out that Zane not only owned the cabin on Cauldron Lake that Alan stays in, but that he was also responsible for the first Bright Falls AWE in 1970, during an attempt to write his wife back to life. Oh, that rhymed. Which is appropriate, seeing as Zane is a poet. Or is he? Because according to this next audio clip from the same interview, there is no poet named Thomas Zane. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s named Thomas Zane. What? Does this mean that the Alan Wake from the Alan Wake games actually exists in a different dimension to the Alan Wake who is mentioned in Control? 
that would explain why there are two different Thomas Zanes, a filmmaker in the control dimension and a poet in the Alan Wake game dimension. If that is the case, this could be explained by the threshold event that happened at Cauldron Lake in 2009. Did this dimensional leak cause Jesse to dream about the Thomas Zane from Alan Wake's parallel dimension? It's a bit of a brain twister, but what we learn from this next point will make this seem like the most likely explanation. I was in a dark place. Once Dylan is locked up in Central Executive, go and have a chat with him about his dreams. Dylan has many dreams to tell you about, but there's one in particular in which he dreams of a writer who writes about a cop. In one of those dreams, the cop is real. In another, he's a work of fiction. So it stands to reason that Zane could be a filmmaker in one reality and a poet in another. In another world, the cop was real. Dor said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. That's not the true Easter egg in this conversation, though, as this is actually a really sly nod to Max Payne, probably Remedy's most well-known video game character. The license to Max Payne is actually owned by Rockstar now, so in order to reference him in Alan Wake, Remedy had to rename the character to Alex Casey. In Alan Wake, Alex Casey features in six books written by Alan Wake, and this character shares many similarities with Max Payne. His wife and child are dead, he has a fondness for painkillers, and there's even a reference to dual Beretta handguns, which are Max's signature weapons. To top it all off, in Alan Wake, manuscripts from the sixth Alex Casey book titled Sudden Stop are narrated by James McCaffrey, who we've already established was the voice of Max Payne in the original games. I can see them now. My wife and my baby. Honey, I'm home. Be a favor, sonny. I could really use a tune right now. Coconut. Number six in the jukebox. The final two Easter eggs focus on some fan favourite characters from Alan Wake, the heavy metal band, the old gods of Asgard. To find the first one, you'll need to make your way to the ordinary dump, and there, right in the centre, you'll find the wreckage of a car with a collectible hidden in its back seat. Pick it up and you'll discover an old gods of Asgard vinyl, containing their greatest hits. Now, while you don't meet the whole band in Alan Wake, you do meet Odin and Tor Anderson, the two remaining members of the Old Gods, who are now undergoing treatment for dementia in the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. In the Bright Falls case file from Easter Egg number three, we learned that Tor and Odin were involved in AWEs in the years 1976, and 1978. Were these clashes with the Dark Presence the cause of their shared dementia? It's not 100%, but it seems quite possible. A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. And so, on to the last Easter egg of the video. This takes place during the Ashtray Maze section of Control, and it's a nice little nod to the events in Alan Wake, when Alan defends the stage on Anderson Farm from the Taken as the song Children of the Elder God blasts from the speakers. In Control, the tape player given to you by the janitor contains another song by the old gods of Asgard called Take Control, and again, it acts as a musical accompaniment to the following battle. Let's go. So, that's the end of that then. With all this evidence, it's pretty much a watertight theory that both games are set within the same universe, if not the same dimension. But what, if anything, does this mean for future Remedy games? Is this a sign that there's an Alan Wake 2 on the horizon? Could we see a Control X Alan Wake crossover in the future? Or maybe, if we're really lucky, maybe Remedy will make their next game all about the old gods of Asgard.
Thanks so much for watching this video. As per usual, if you enjoyed it, do give it a like and do think about subscribing for more from us here at Eurogamer. Right, I'm off to go and practice my levitation skills now, so uh, why not click on one of these videos and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, bye. Okay, I'm just gonna try and levitate down these steps. <laughs> Oh, my bum hole. Oh, God.